match. Next stop on the cricket circuit was Adelaide, where the Aussies made two changes. Damien Martin made way for West Australian teammate Justin Langer, who was to make his debut, while Greg Matthews made way for local Tim May, with Tony Dodder made 12th man. The West Indies, meanwhile, left out Jimmy Adams, preferring quickie Kenneth Benjamin. Richie Richardson called correctly and decided to bat on a seemingly normal Adelaide wicket. That's a glance, goes wide of Hurley, that's going all the way. That was a bad delivery. And the old leg glance, or shy on the onside, he got some bat onto that. Hurley not diving, it was well wide, and it raced away for four. That's four more. No need at all for Phil Simmons to run there. That's actually the position that Justin Langer had occupied to all two balls previously. Simmons finds the gap. Punches this very cleanly through the offside and four all the way. There's another one. Shouts of catch it. Murph Hughes is the man going for it. And Steve Waugh has got the breakthrough with what looked like the leg cutter slower ball. Phil Simmons looking to try and turn this ball away on the leg side. It's well bowled by Steve Waugh. Simmons miscuing the leading edge again. We've seen this sort of dismissal for a lot of batsmen over the last couple of months. Murph Hughes with a good safe pair of hands. Finally success for Australia as Steve Waugh strikes. Simmons is the man out for 46. West Indies are one for 84. A little bit of moisture in the track and the ball really grips in the first session. Langer can't quite get it again. So plenty of boundaries in this innings for the West Indies as they move to one for 99. Good shout from Mervyn, he's been given. Daryl Hare raises the finger. So Merv Hughes has got a tremendous breakthrough for his skipper. Merv Hughes finds exactly the right line to Richard Richardson. The West Indies captain playing across the line of this ball. And that ball hits him right in front of the stumps. He'll probably have taken out middle, middle and leg. Daryl Hare with a relatively easy decision and Richard Richardson is gone. LBW to Merv Hughes. West Indies have lost their second wicket now for 99. Third test hero Brian Lara joined Haynes. Well, that's well played. He's got that away down and fine. And that'll roll into the boundary for four. So very well played. Five runs off the over, two for 106. Yes, he's got him. He's out stumped. Beautifully taken there by Healy. And the bales were off in a flash. And that's the end of Desmond Haynes. He went walkabout a little bit there. He looked as if he saw the full toss. I think it might even have been a full toss. If it wasn't, it was a half volley. And good work by Healy. That's another crucial dis dismissal for the Australians. And the ball just drifting down, just turning a little bit into Ian Healy's gloves. Very, very good, quick, quick piece of work by Ian Healy. And the Australians are well pleased. Tim May is ecstatic. Back into the test side on his home ground in Adelaide. The West Indies three for 129. Arthur on strike, get to score. Drives and he's out. Driving at the pitch. Well bowled by May, a bit of fight. And Steve Waugh, a very good fielder, took the catch. It was off the edge, it was spinning. And that's fine bowling by the off spinner. I can tell you that is one of the best dismissals you will see. Lovely flight. He brought him down the pitch for the drive. He was never quite there. And dragged him just outside off stump as well. That is a classic piece of slow bowling. Arthur and the man who has gone. Don't often see batsmen play strokes of that kind before they've uh, made runs. And it's four for 130. Third piece of bowling by Tim May. Has two for 21. Oh, that spins. Gets away from Healy. Well, maybe a leg by. Coming back for two. 
No, it was some bat there, so certainly May getting some turn on the first day, and Adelaide, that's unusual. Yes! Gone! Yes, caught behind, beautifully bowled. Carl Hooper fishing outside the line of the off stump, and the West Indies crash to 5 for 1 3 4. No problems from the pitch there. That was uh, Carl Hooper drawn into the stroke by Merv Hughes. Very good bowling. Hughes bowled well earlier this morning, but he's not entirely used to bowling with a new ball for Australia these days. He's much better, I always think, when he's coming on and the ball is just a little bit old. There, he got the ball to go away from Hooper, just enough to find the outside edge for Healy to effect another dismissal. Good performance, 5 for 134. Well, pitch doesn't miss those. Wall coming around from square leg. It's four. On the attack, Junior Murray. And that's nicely struck. No one in the outfield. Takes the aerial route. Okay, Dermot the bowler. And there's a nice start straight after the rain interruption here at the Adelaide Oval. Five for 188 for Brian Lara. And just in front of Healy, or did he get it? He's got it, uh, Brian Lara is leaving. I thought for a minute there that the ball had bounced just in front of the keeper, but that's a very good catch. And a very good ball from Craig McDermott. That ball pitched in line with the stumps and when the cross is by look at this ball go very good catch that by Ian Healy going across in front of slip very vital look at that for Australia not one that West Indies would have loved to have lost this Brian Lara gone for 52 and West Indies now 6 for 189 shouts of catch it Mark War's done that and he's been given out. Umpire Len King now, I'm assuming that it was caught by Mark War. Not sure that Ian Bishop is convinced on that. Yes, I think this one will need a bit of clarification, whether it was LBW or caught by Mark War. Very difficult to see if he did hit it, but Obviously, Len King gave him out caught because he was looking to make sure that Mark Ward did take that catch. Weston is now 7 for 206. Kirtley Ambrose, who's been uh, struggling for batting form on this tour. Shouts of catch it. And yes, Kirtley Ambrose has just got a glove on that one. So Merv, uh, once again, with that ability to pick up wickets he's got a terrific strike rate Merv Hughes he's done it again with two in this over yes that was a good delivery good short ball from Merv Hughes very simple catch that for Ian Healy best in his lose hurt the Ambrose who has been struggling with his batting form it's now eight for 206 West Indies or yet to bowl in the inning. Steve does mix it up when he's bowling and tends to unsettle the batsman a bit. That's not a bad delivery there. One for none to Mark War. He slips the little inducker between bat and pad or actually off the inside edge of the pad. Kenneth Benjamin gets the inside edge onto the stumps and he's gone for 15. I'm sure the boys will be saying good bowling change, Captain. Mark War to come on to replace his twin brother, Stephen, and almost instantly gets the breakthrough and that's a good breakthrough for Australia that partnership was building up it was very healthy just through the little gap there rather big gap I should say between bat and pad and Mark War has the uncanny knack of doing that Kenneth Benjamin bold Mark War West Indies 9 for 247 big shot for LV um, by King gives him 5 for Mervyn Hughes Walsh out for five, Junior Murray a well-made 49, not out. The West Indians bowled out for 252. Yes, a good comeback here by Australia. West Indies were sitting comfortable at 84 without loss. And they have struck back Merv Hughes, the man, getting five wickets.
Despite the loss of 56 minutes due to rain, the Aussies still were able to bowl the Windies out inside a day. The visitors would have been very disappointed as Haynes, Simmons, Lara and Murray all getting starts but failing to go on. For the Aussies, Big Merv turned in a lion-hearted performance, taking 5 for 64 from 21.3 overs, with spinner Tim May chiming in with two, while McDermott and the Wars each got one. The Aussies then had to endure a nasty little session just before stumps. Line, well caught by Carl Hooper. That's what was needed. It was there. Taylor played that line. It was a very sharp catch, and it was a brilliant catch under the pressure of the night time and the vitalness of this match. And a great breakthrough by Bishop. Yes, that's the first ball that he has bowled on line in this over. Two previous deliveries, one well wide down the leg side, another one pretty short. But that one was a very good delivery. Pitching in line with the stumps, Mark Taylor had to play. Just enough movement to take it across his body to find that outside edge. Ian Bishop is happy. Well, the entire West Indies team is happy. They needed that breakthrough. Mark Taylor goes for one. Australia one for one. 22 years of age. He's also left-handed. So the same line will be the attack from Bishop. Hits him on the helmet. That's not out. That's a bit of a nasty one. It certainly stopped him. He's uh, not sure where he is. He's in a bit of trouble. Now he's been hit on the head before. Not a very good blow at all. Took his eyes off the ball, turned his back on it. Not really the correct way to play these short pitch balls. Taylor back in the pavilion and Langer almost out on his feet. The Aussies were struggling at one for two with Ian Bishop sending Taylor packing. Day two would turn into a very dirty day weather-wise and Langer and Boone would need to steer the Aussies through a testy opening session. After a baptism of bowling fire the day before, Justin Langer was doing some fine tuning before play. It wasn't long though before he put it into practice. Then came the satisfaction of hitting the pickets. Fine shot. Enter Kurtley Ambrose. Exit, David Boone. It's Boone on the arm, that's a very bad one. A short of the length delivery, Ambrose wasn't concerned, but the doctor was, and Boone retired on two. With the conditions favouring the quicks, the Windies removed another batsman in a more orthodox way. The West Indies now right in this match. Mark Waugh out for a duck, the Aussies on the back foot at two for 16. A sigh of relief for the home side when rain delayed play. It was a testing 25 minutes just before the lunch break. Langer again in the wars. He's having a real tough time of it out there. Bogged down, Langer felt the need to hit out. Gone! Caught behind! A faint edge ended a gutsy 20. Border then took it upon himself to resurrect the innings. Sydney Centurion Steve Waugh provided the necessary support. Steve Waugh pulling away. There were some anxious moments for Waugh, but constant showers ended the pressure and the final session. Nearly two sessions lost due to rain and a couple of the Aussies licking their wounds in the game delicately poised with the score at 3 for 100. David Boone in the pavilion nursing a very sore elbow but he would bat later in the innings when required. Alan Border was on 18 and Steve Waugh on 35 and they resumed at the wicket on day three. Their task? Simply to see the home team safely pass the West Indies total. Blazed that one through the offside. He likes a bit of room out there, and uh, especially when it's pitched up, he'll have a full go at it, and on that occasion it did hit the meat of the bat. In the air and out. Quarter second slip, Hooper doing the catching there. What a wicket that is for the West Indies. Ambrose has struck again. That one was just a little further pitched up there, just moved away a little bit, found the outside edge. And straight to second slip. Hooper making no mistake. He caught it just above the surface. Alan Border coming forward. Australia lose their fourth wicket. It's four for 108. In the air, and that's another one. He's gone. Out caught it slip. Australia really in trouble here. Healy going for the wide one. That one just short of a length. It went flying away. And again, Hooper does the work. That's a good catch. It was a quick delivery. And Healy is on his way. And again, Healy on the front foot. Look at this. The left foot coming forward, the right length. Just enough movement again to hit the outside edge. What more can you ask? Australia lose their fifth wicket. It's 5 for 108. Well, David Boone has uh, just received a 
big ovation. He's walked out to the centre. He's got uh, obviously a lot of strapping around that elbow of his. He's wearing a lot of protection up his arm. It's well played by Boone. It's lucky over pitched and he's driven it down the ground. And look for three here. Settle for the three. A war on strike again, two slips and... Oh, that's out! Caught behind, big nick there, Stephen War has gone as well. That ball bouncing a little bit more, he's played and missed quite often, and that was a big edge. They hardly went up, really, it was such a big edge, and through to the keeper it went, and up came the umpire's finger, this is how it happened. Yes, a little bit wider than you, you'd think that Steve Waugh needed to play at, but it certainly was a good ball. Pitching and just doing enough to leave Steve Waugh and hit that outside edge. A courageous innings, but Australia lose their six wicket for 1-1-2. One, one, That's a good shot. Well hit and into the gap. In fact, it's cleared the boundary. Beautiful hit. Well, as I mentioned just a couple of overs ago, when he makes full contact with that three-pound bat of his, he certainly hits them a long way. That's not a good ball, but it's a good shot. Uh, Hughes playing that beautifully away through the vacant cover position. Four good runs. Big shot and he's out, Murphy's is gone, that's a bit of luck for Carl Hooper. Just a thin glance down the leg side, well taken by Junior Murray. The change of ends has certainly brought the change of luck, and it's brought the end with good innings from Murphy's too. Well, this is good wicket keeping, not unlike um, the dismissal of Desmond Haynes, although that was a stumping, it needed good footwork from the wicket keeper to take that catch, it spun. And Murph Hughes has gone for 43. That's a very good innings from Hughes, 7 for 181. That's going to be close too, and it's gone. Shane Warren has gone very quickly. Carl Hooper strikes twice in the same over. Good change of pace. Dead straight ball from Carl Hooper. And Shane Warren is gone for a duck. There's no shortage of ducks. That was beautifully bowled. Well, Warren will appreciate how good that was because he bowls a top spinner himself generally after a ball has spun a considerable amount and Hooper has uh, done that very well indeed it's uh, 8 for 181 beautiful placement it and Daryl Hare has given Tim May. I think Tim May feels that it came off his arm, looks at his arm and uh, I think he's probably got a reasonable uh, complaint there. Yes, Tim May looks pretty convinced that that came off his arm. Goes to Kurt Ambrose as a fifth oh. wicket but certainly it seemed to brush the arm. If it touched something before the arm, will we can't tell from that, but it's nine for one, nine to seven, Australia. Whoops, and uh, an attempt there, I think, to York. It was a full pitch at the end of the day, and it's gone flying away wide of the third slip into the boundary for four. Always bowled him. That's hit McDermott and got onto the stumps. And so, very well bowled by Ambrose. Magnificent figures. Those are his best uh, figures against Australia.
A solid fight back by the Australian lower order to trail the Windies by just 39 runs on the first innings. Surprisingly, Big Merv top scored with a blustering 43, while Steve Waugh made 42 and the wing David Boone finishing unbeaten on 39 in the Australian total of 213. Curtly Ambrose once again the thorn in the Aussie side, taking 6 for 74 from 28.2 overs, but was ably supported by Hooper, Benjamin and Bishop. So with a lead of 39 and only two and a half days elapsed, the West Indies were once again at the crease to begin their second innings. And over the top. Well, it was uh, uppishly played there by Ains. He's certainly having a go from the word go. Back for a third. Will they come back for the fourth? Yes, they will. So an all run four. It was very lucky Ains having a go at that. It wasn't really there to hit. I'm sure both of them would like to exploit the early conditions using the new ball. Yeah! And he's gone. So the exploitation has come almost immediately. Just as Michael Whitney predicted. And 14 on the board sees the first wicket go down. Desmond Haynes has gone. That climbed. It was a good delivery from McDermott. I reckon it was a yard or so quicker than anything else he's bowled. Yes, very good delivery from Craig McDermott drawing Desmond Haynes bat towards the ball like a bit of a magnet there and it is West Indies at the moment one for 14 and one of them has to do some chasing there but it'll be to no avail oh, well done. he deserves that McDermott a very very good spell here very good spell indeed with great pace movement in the air and a bit off the seam as well and he has just knocked over Phil Simmons well, as the, the perfect out swinger he's moving in towards Ooh. middle stump just doing a little bit in the air and perfect length forcing Phil Simmons and didn't really move forward very well bowled. He's bowled a superb spell. The West Indies, two for 49. One layer on strike, get the score. Oh, what a way to start. Cracking shot through the covers off the back foot. He's a confident young man. There's no substitute for form and confidence. That's probably the shot of the match. Oh. What a catch! A jam by Ward Gully. Lara took him on. He fell to a superb catch. But we feel his cricket this. Swine has scored six runs and over this throne. We've had everything, but a superb catch by War and good bowling. Brian Lara hit that ball very firmly. But Steve Wall was very deep in the gully. This ball sliced off the middle of the bat. He went straight at Steve Moore's Wall's midriff. He's a good catch in that position, made no mistake with it. Forced him backwards. As I said, there was a lot of pace on that ball, and Brian Hara, Lara too late, re-rehearsing the shot. He's gone for seven. West Indies are three for 63. It's gone! He's got a pair! Fine bowling by McDermott, good catching by Healy. Australia on top in the fourth test at the Adelaide Oval. Well bowled Craig McDermott. He's followed this ball outside the off stump. Angled wide and going wider. Situation just too much for Keith Arthur, and the pressure was showing. He's out for a duck. It's four for 65. The two, Carl Hooper taking guard. Dermot bowling very quickly indeed. His tail's up. He's coming in from the river end. Hugh Richardson doesn't mind playing a hook shot. Didn't quite get it as he would have liked. Perhaps a little bit high on the face of the bat. It's in the air, Big Merv won't drop this, he's a great fieldsman, he's gone, Furley shot, a good effort by May, he was prepared to buy that wicket, good catching and a vital breakthrough. Was it ever, he tossed it up just a little bit and he got underneath it, perhaps a little bit of edge in that one, it's a short boundary down there and Merv Hughes made no mistake with the catch, he put on his way, out caught by Merv Hughes for 20 for 25 to May the bowler and the West Indies now five down for 124. A 
It's well hit. When you bowl a bad ball, it goes for six. Right over towards the Victor Richardson gates. Superb stroke. It's gone again. This time it's over again. That's tremendous batting by the captain. Shane Warren bowling a good length. It wasn't a bad ball, and he swept that right over square leg for six. Superb stroke. Gone, yes, beautiful catch. Junior Murray's not interested, but certainly the umpire is, and he's out for a duck. Well caught. Well, he looks very disappointed, and the big question is, was there any doubt here? Obviously none in the mind of the umpire. Junior Murray looking very disappointed and dejected. He's out in the West Indies now, six down for 137. That's going to be out. He's gone, whichever way you look at it, Richardson lured down the wicket. That's lovely bowling by Shane Warne. Richardson didn't make the pitch of the ball, the ball turned sharply away, beat the outside edge. Might just have been a little nick, but whatever happened, Ian Healy was there with the gloves to make the stumping as well. Causing the wicket, the West Indies 7 for 145. Today that the fast bowlers have extracted some pace and lift, and now some turn this afternoon from the spinners. And he's out again, yes, Ambrose is gone. Again, lovely bowling by Tim May. He saw exactly what Shane Warne did from the other end. This is beautifully flighted by Tim May. Lord Ambrose this time down the wicket. Again, Ian Healy very quick behind the stumps. West Indies now are eight down for 146. Cat. In the air. And out. Not good batting by Kenneth Benjamin. Well, like most tail enders, Kenny Benjamin not content to stand there and block for too long. A bit of a swing at that ball. Very well flighted again by Tim May and turning into him. Shane Warne making good ground and a very good catch. Yes, almost uh, an Aussie rules mark. Being from Victoria, be very akin to that. And very pleasing look on Tim May's face. As he takes his fourth wicket for nine runs. The West Indies, nine for 146. And that's gone. Five wickets for Tim May. That's lovely bowling from the off-spinner. Five wickets in a test match against the West Indies. Ian Bishop is the last man out for the West Indies. Again, a very good, sharp catch. That silly point. What a wonderful reward for Tim May. His birthday's tomorrow. The presents come a day early. The end of an amazing day's play. The West Indies bundled out for a paltry 146 with Captain Richardson and Carl Hooper contributing almost 100 of that total. The West Indies led by 185 with two full days of play remaining. For the Aussies, Tim May's tweakers returned him the figures of five for nine with Craig McDermott supporting with three wickets and the Victorian pair of Warren and Hughes taking one wicket each. The normally placid batsman-dominated Adelaide wicket was proving to be a handful, with the net result for day three being 17 for 259. The Australians in the fourth innings of the match would need to conquer not only the demons in the pitch, but also the fury of the West Indian great maturity bar the shot he got out on, and Tim May with 42 not out, supported by the luckless McDermott at the end, who nearly guided his country to an unlikely victory. For the Windies, once again, Kirtley Ambrose was the hero, picking up four for 46, while the old campaigner Courtney Walsh grabbing himself three for 44. Big Kirtley collected the man of the match honours for his ten wickets in the